Welcome back to Steam Power Classroom's book review blog series. Now I'm going to continue with my last week's theme of math titles that your kids are going to love. And we'll start out right away with Bedtime Math 2. Now this is the sequel to Bedtime Math, which is already checked out of our library, so I couldn't get a hold of that copy for this, uh, for this episode. But this is by Laura Overdeck. And um, I don't know if you've heard of these or not. They're getting a lot of attention, and they're worth every bit of it. Uh, they are basically, Bedtime Math is instead of reading bedtime stories to your kids, why not have some math activities kind of thrown in there too? That it's something as fun and comforting as a bedtime story is kind of the whole idea. And I mean, seriously, look at the look at the look at that book. It is. It is fun. It's comforting. It's something that you would want to share with your kids, and that I think your kids would get really excited about. And they are fun. They have different leveled activities, so it's going to give you a little uh, presentation of a problem, and then for the very tiny ones. You know, a very simple math question. If you have a slightly older child, something a little bit more complex. Big kids, something even a little bit more complex. So you can explore some, some math concepts together before bed. I like that. That's cute. This one is called Edgar Allan Poe's Pie. Math Puzzlers and Cl Classic Poems by Patrick Lewis. And that's what it is. It's combining some really fun, like this is Emily Dickinson's telephone book. And so you've got the poem, and you've got kind of you've got some math puzzlers within each poem. Lewis Carroll's Fish and Chips, Robert Frost's Boxer Shorts. I mean, that's really fun. So you're combining math and literature. It's just a great discussion um, and a great introduction to some pretty famous poets as well, or, or writers. The next uh, couple are by Greg Tang. This one's called Math Potatoes, Mind Stretching Brain Food. And this is for your younger crowd as well. A lot of you might be already familiar with these. They're very popular. He's got a bunch of them. Um, there's a poem, a little puzzle, a nice illustration, and, and something that you're interacting with to solve the problem that's presented on the page before. So that one's called Math Potatoes. This one's another one called Math Appeal. But there's a lot, there's a lot of them. He's got a bunch in this series. Uh, next is from DK. You know how I love DK. This one's called Why Pie? Why, how Math Applies to Everyday Life. And this is one that I kept checked out for a long time and put it in the back seat of the car and was so shocked. Like every once in a while my kid would bring up something, some kind of math concept that I knew that I hadn't taught him. And I'd be like, where did you learn that? And he would say, oh, you know, why pie? So there's a lot of great stuff in there, and he spent a lot of time with it just because it was sitting in the back seat of the car. I think he ended up reading the whole thing several times. Um, it's just fun. You want to pick it up. You want to pick it up and explore. I don't like that. Uh, you know, the, I, in another episode, I talked about horrible histories. Well, they also have a series called Terry Deary. Actually, nope, this is a different author. I'm sorry, Jartan Poskett. This is another series called Murderous Maths, and it's in that same vein as the Horrible History books. It's funny, it's kind of got a bizarre, a little bit dark of a sense of humor. Uh, there's, a lot, there's tons of illustrations thrown in there, it's, but it's really all about the humor. And this uh, Murderous Maths, this one's awesome, Arithmetic Tricks. This one's called Savage Shapes, but there's, uh, I think, about a dozen of these at least, um, with, of different, each one has a, a specific math concept tying into geometry, pre-algebra, addition, subtraction, whatever. So those are fun. And here's one that's um, color. Murderous math of everything. It's maths with the laughs added in. It's by the same author. And um, again, they're math puzzles. A lot of humor in these. And something that you're just going to want to play around with. Explore. And then last, we're getting a little bit older now. And I used this book with my daughter last year by Donica McKellar, Math Doesn't Suck. And she's got several in this series as well. This one is pre-algebra, and then she's got one on geometry and one on algebra. It's done like, you know, like a teen magazine. The look is very much like that. You've got all the little um, subtitles, how to survive middle school math without losing your mind or breaking a nail. And at first, you know, you can debate whether or not you like the, the kind of stereotypical approach to it, looking like a, a very, uh, I don't know, a girly girl magazine. But inside, you know, we, it kind of actually brought up some great gender role conversations for my daughter and myself. Um, and I still like Donna, uh, Donica McKellar very much. She is very, uh, wants to help, very much wants to help girls to embrace whatever they like and still know that they can do amazing things like math and science and, um, and the amazing things like polishing your nails. If that's what you're into, that's cool too. And she's really good about validating wherever you are, whatever you like to do. 
Um, so sometimes if we were into the lipsticks that were uh, a very popular math object of choice, then we would switch it out and say, I don't know, Magic the Gathering cards, or we played with her, you know, her toys and called it, you know, a bag full of stuffed koalas instead of lipsticks. So you can kind of play around with that too. But um, really like this series, and it helped us get through some some pretty intense math stuff, math concepts, in a very friendly way. So I hope you enjoyed those, and I'll see you next week.